<laughs> Hello and welcome to another episode of the show. I've invited Heather back on the podcast. If you haven't heard Heather, uh, Heather Carocio is a wonderful friend of mine. She has the Wellness Matters podcast. Uh, she Her website, Wellness Matters. She has all kinds of amazing offerings that she is putting together, but she's also a friend in real life that's always texting me like, what does this mean? <laughs> Nonstop. <laughs> Even just yesterday I was. <laughs> I love it because I forget I dive so deep and I, I learn all of this stuff and then I'm I'm sharing and I've known it for so long that I forget like how how do you even introduce this, right? Like how, how would we introduce these topics? And so the other day, Heather sent me this screenshot and it was like the big three in human design. And she was like, what am I? <laughs> exactly. And she's read my whole chart and like gone over everything into detail. And then six months later, I'm like, was that what I am? What am I again? Tell me what I am again. So she's got to answer all of my questions at any given moment. And it's quite frequently. So she wanted to have me on the, the podcast today to be the person that's walking down the street that has no idea really what human design and astrology really are. I mean, I know some of the basics, but I'm going to be the person that's going to be asking all the questions. And I told her she's found the right person for this job. <laughs> yes. I love it. And, you know, sometimes I'll get like texts, oh, great podcast, but I didn't understand this or I didn't understand this. And it's really hard if you don't have somebody that's like asking you questions to respond or to know right. what level we're at, right? Like, is this making sense? Is this making sense? And so, yeah, I, I knew you were exactly right. Not only because you yeah. have your own show and you, you know, we, we have so much fun talking together, but because- you definitely ask questions and you're like, let me make sure I understand this. So that yeah. is the goal is to, for everybody to understand a little bit better. And it does take time, right? Like human design takes time. Well, and like, I feel I have to, most people probably have to be in the right mindset to, I might have to hear something five times before it really is locked in. So I was just writing to Angela yesterday or the day before I was on my bed with my daughter talking about astrology because I got a new book. And so I was like, all right, I got this new pretty book and I'm going to look through the pictures and read some of the stuff. And I find myself, I'm like, oh my gosh, what does that mean? I, I had no idea what the mid heaven was and how important that was in the chart and whatnot. I just thought it was the big three for astrology. So then when I was figuring out other things, I'm like, oh my God, Angela, what does this mean? Why do we have to do that? But anyway, I think it's, I, I'm not the type of person where I can just sit down and learn the entire language in one sitting. So it might be six months later where I'm like, oh, okay, that's what the, uh, the rising sign means, you know, and I kind of piece it together that way. So I don't know, maybe the listeners are more of learners like that as well. We'll see. Yeah. Yeah. No, it definitely, I want to introduce everybody to these topics. I want everybody to learn how to pull their chart. And then sometimes it just takes, I mean, you can go on Instagram and you can find all kinds of over and over and over them saying, if you're a generator, it looks like this. If you're a projector, it looks like this. So there's so many resources that you can continually look at until you really start to deeply understand it. And that's kind of what I had to do. I've listened to probably in the hundreds the human design podcast, right? Like on every topic over a, a certain amount of time, even astrology, because I, I struggle to learn from a teacher. I like to learn at a very, I'm a manifesting generator, which we'll talk about. So I like to go like the highest level I can. And then I have to go back and relearn it in steps again, because mm. I have to know that there's a higher level and I have to kind of understand where I'm trying to get yeah. before I'm interested enough to learn. Right. And so I'll read all of these really high level books and then I'll have to go back and read them again as mm -hmm. my level of understanding grows. Right. I kind of do that too. Like that's what I was talking about, like bits and pieces. Um, but sometimes I get a squirrel and then I'm like, oh, what's this new thing? And what's that new thing? And then after I've learned that new thing, then I can go back to like maybe human design again and astrology. Like I have tried to pick up astrology probably five different times in the last four years. So 
like I get into it, really into it. And then all of a sudden I'm like, but then there's, you know, um, you know, Pleiades. <laughs> I want to yeah. do galactic yeah. type stuff, yeah. you know? So um, I love all the information, but sometimes I, I get sidetracked, you know? And so, yeah, but I, I learn it when I need to learn it. Like when it's really more aligned for me to understand more about some of the details. Yeah. And, and that's what I kind of want to make clear like why does this even matter and and how, like why would you go pull your human design chart why do you want to mm-hmm, know the big three mm-hmm. and if you're coming to me for a reading I really want you to know your big three already right like we'll go deep yeah if I have to give you the yeah. surface level you're paying me to give you surface level information right <laughs> like right. I want to go deep but I don't want to overwhelm you so let's start here right yeah yeah Okay, so uh, if everything goes as planned, this will also be on YouTube, so you can watch the journey. Uh, but we're going to do our best if you're listening on the podcast to to make sure you're not missing anything. But I will throw a link in the podcast if if all goes as planned and I <laughs> successfully <laughs> learn how our, to use YouTube. <laughs> yes, our first time on YouTube. Oh. I had to put uh, lipstick on today. Yes, yes, <laughs> I know. The po- it's so easy to just podcast with your voice. You don't have to do anything else. But right, now we're right. now we're showing up for y'all. That's right. Uh, okay, so I mean, the easiest thing you can hop in a Google, <laughs> pull a Google document and say "human design chart." Enter. All of these options will come up. I've chosen to pull up on Jovian Archive today. I really like a lot. I like my human design. I like uh, Emma Dunn, where these the human design coach. Hopefully, someday soon, you will be able to pull it up on my website. It's just not there yet. So, pull your chart, and then I've just gone ahead and actually, we'll just pull another one if you're on the YouTube. I'm just doing a today chart, but you would put in your day, month, year of birth. You need the hour. The hour is very important. It's very important in human design. It's very important in um, astrology as well, because we're pulling planets and things change. I mean, within minutes sometimes. Yeah. 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 So you really want to put to the minute if you can um and then it's going to ask you what country you put that and then what city i'm going to use the city i was born and we're just going to calculate so it will give you your human design chart it says chart properties and that's where we're just going to live right here is type the authority and the profile so, so these three things are known as the big three you were talking about, correct? Yes. Is that kind of like in astrology, the big three would be the moon, the sun, and the rising? Is it kind of like the same thing? Yes. Yes. Okay. And that's, you know, when I, when you talk to people, sometimes people in astrology are like, I don't really get it. I'm, I'm this sun and it doesn't make any sense. Only like one out of five people really identify with their sun. Uh, a lot of people identify more strongly with the moon. The moon really Mm -hmm. controls emotions and how do we feel safe and how do we, you know, it's like the moon is very important. And then the rising is really always kind of, what did we come here to experience the world through is this rising sign, right? So the sun is kind of fueling us. The moon is like, how do I feel safe? What are my emotional stability? Kind of how did we attach to our mother? Like all of these things, the moon is kind of lineage, right? So we Mm. can connect to our lineage with the moon. We can connect to the sun is like, okay, this is the energy that everything is kind of shining through. And Mm. then the, the rising sign, a lot of times, even back in the day when people didn't always know their, their minute of birth, because the rising sign changes very, very quickly. Right. Um, the, the astrologers would look at a person and be able to tell because the rising sign kind of rules, like, what do you look like on the outside? How do you show up? You know, and you're okay. a cancer rising. You're very like comforting. You're very like, this is family. This is safe. This Teddy is- bear. <laughs> 
I got my teddy bear sweater on too. I'm all cozy. Yes. Yes. So um, usually cancer rising, you're just kind of drawn to that. So with the rising, that was the planet that was coming over the horizon when you were born. Is that correct? Uh, so it'd be what planet. part of the Zodiac, right? So the Zodiac. So yeah. Yep. The, yep. There, okay. it, there could be a planet there. There could not be, but okay. it's just, that's where we're going to start the circle, right? Like this is the horizon. Yeah. So, and would you say the sun and the moon, is that like the masculine feminine energies of us? No. Kind of? No, okay. they, they can. So the, the big three, right. That's a big part of your chart. And so like, I'm a Gemini sun and that's a masculine energy. Uh, mm-hmm. I'm a Leo rising. That's a masculine energy. And my moon is in Libra. That's a masculine energy. <laughs> so, oh, so that doesn't make any sense. Okay. Because but, I know like in spirituality, like the sun is more, they talk about that being the masculine and then the moon is more the feminine overall, I guess. So I feminine know. is tied to mother. Mm-hmm. Sun is tied to father. So that's why we would maybe put a Got masculine it. feminine. Um, masculine and feminine are just always used. L- let's see, where does this, ca- let's categorize this, right? for yeah. like what kind of, I know that you're going to do a podcast soon and, and maybe we'll talk about this. What part of the chart is your masculine and feminine energies? That would be Venus mm-hmm. and Mars. Okay. Got it. Yes. Which could be in a masculine sign or feminine sign, but there's still Mars is the masculine and Venus is the feminine. So got it. But yeah, that that's a whole new episode that we'll have to <laughs> okay. dive into. Getting, really, yes. That's getting really granular. <laughs> Okay. 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 The top three. Okay. So big three. So yeah. So we'll do, we'll do a, uh, I'm planning another podcast for the big three in astrology today. We're just doing the big three in human design. Um, this is just like, if you were to meet somebody, you're going to understand a lot better who they are. If you tell me your sun, moon, and rising in astrology, I'm going to know a lot more than if I just knew your son. Right. 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 And same with the human design. <laughs> I know something about you if I know what type you are, right? right? I know a little bit more about you if I know your authority. And then I can really, really kind of dial in if I know your profile, which usually I can tell if I talk to you yeah, <laughs> any amount of time. Um, I right. have a decent idea of what these are. Um, and just for like the listener, I'm sure it is like with somebody who is so schooled in this um, modality like you, you can kind of, when you're meeting somebody for the first time, it is nice to kind of know them on a deeper level. But I'd say for somebody like me who dabbles, I think it's even more important for the family members of my house. So I know how to live with them versus like any Joe Schmo I'm just meeting. Like, I don't know if I'll get to that level. Maybe I will. (laughs) Yeah. I want to know everybody. I, I like if, yeah. if I get on Facebook and I see birthdays, I'm like, Oh, <laughs> you're like, what's this chart? <laughs> yes. Yes. I, I told you that I, I squirrel a lot too. I was, I was doing a bunch of work yesterday and I was listening to music and all of a sudden uh, the guy was talking about how he'd met Leonard Cohen in person and blah, 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 blah. And all of a sudden I've got Leonard Cohen's chart up and I'm looking at him and I'm like, oh my gosh, I know. Oh, because he was talking about how his mom, I can't remember. I think it was Damien Rice was was doing a live concert and I was listening to his music, trying to keep myself working on this mundane test and yeah. he was talking about Leonard Cohen and how he went to uh, his concert and he got to meet him and his girlfriend was there and his mom was there and her friend was there and they all have different taste in men. But by the end of the night, they were all in love with Leonard Cohen. All of them. Of course. Of course. <laughs> it's like a look. And um, I think his, I think it's his son is right on his rising. Right. So it just makes him magnetic. Right. Because oh. that rising is like, who do I show up as? And your yeah. son right there is so magnetic. So I thought that was interesting, but then I, yeah, I was squirreling again, just like we're squirreling again. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, see, I wouldn't have known that even the placement of certain things, like to the degree, like how important that really is to know. 
Oh yeah. Okay. It's yeah. It's all, I mean, I could just geek out forever, uh, which is why I want to start doing this series so we can just incrementally build. So right. human design was really my first, I'd known my son was in Gemini. If you pull any of those books, Gemini is like sometimes not the favorite of the, the Zodiac and some people can like write it in a way that's not even very positive. Huh. Um, and so I just didn't, didn't really connect with astrology right, right away. And, and I didn't realize the depth that astrology had knowing all of the planets and then knowing what houses and, and all of the building that you can do there. So when I heard, I was listening to a podcast and of course the gal was the same profile as me and the same type. So it probably drew me in a little bit. She was talking yeah. about human design and I'd pulled my chart. I was in a class years and years ago with uh, my best friend. And so we'd kind of pulled our charts and we kind of knew human design a little bit. And she was talking and I was like, whoa, there's something here. And I just remember that moment like it was yesterday. And so I got out the book and I just kept learning and learning. But of course, the big old Bible that you get um, that <laughs> that Ra, the, the founder of human design, his language can be extremely negative in some ways. Um, shocking. He had the gate of shock. So he likes to shock people awake with his language. Um, and then it's all very foreign, right? Like manifesting yeah. generator and these strategies and themes and all it's very foreign. Right. Mm -hmm. And so that's the thing about human design. It's like, try not to get caught up in the wording because we're going to break it down. Right. Right. To just the basics. So, so right now we're going to talk about types. There are five types, technically maybe four types and a subtype because uh, generator and manifesting generator are both very similar. Um, but they but, but we'll talk about the differences. So we're just going to go over the five types. We're going to go over authority, which is how do we make decisions, right? And profiles. So we'll just start at type. So everybody hopefully has had time to pull their chart now. They've got it in front of them. They know what type they are, whether they're a generator, manifesting generator, projector, reflector, or manifester. So everybody's got that in front of you and we'll just kind of run through each. So Heather is a generator. Mm -hmm. So anybody that's a generator just means that if we're looking at the boxes in the body graph and I've heard some very funny things, like somebody asked, is, is this body graph the shape of me? They thought it looked very round. And I was like, no, it all, the, the picture is always the same, like for everybody. For everyone, it's universal. Yes, yes. Universal size. Um, all Everybody has the same nine centers. Does Some of them. Chubby? <laughs> yeah. Some of them will be um, maybe not colored in and some of them are colored in. And so that just means defined or undefined. So we're just looking from the bottom is that root up one is the sacral. So if you have your sacral filled in, it just means that you're a generator type, right? So either a manifesting generator or a generator type, both of you have that sacral filled in. And we'll kind of do generator and manifesting generator at the same time since they're very similar. We have, I've got a picture up if you're watching on the video that kind of shows the auras. So this is what we're talking about when we're talking about what type you are. We're talking about what your aura looks like, right? Hmm. So generator has this warm enveloping aura that starts at the sacral. If you know anything about the chakra system, the sacral is kind of creation. It's life force. It's like the juiciness of life, right? It wants to create things. And so you have this, this sacral that wants to create. And so it pulses this warm aura out that other types can feel. I can feel when I'm in a room with a generator for the most part, right? Mm -hmm. So we have this warm enveloping aura that pushes out. If we were talking about the projector type, the aura is more focused. If you're one-on-one -on -one with a projector, you have never been more seen in your life. A projector dives in. The generator's like, I want to understand you. I want to understand me. I want to, you know, the projector's <laughs> like, hey, 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 focus. <laughs> oh, okay. okay. Projectors are That's very, my son. 
Yeah. They're very good at focusing, Mm -hmm. um, focusing in, right. They're Mm -hmm. very good at knowing. And and the the thing is that we we've got different gates. It's very interesting to me. I have a son that's a generator. He really does use his sacral power, um, but he's got a lot of projector gates. And so he's very good at, at directing with those. Right. So, so there's lots of little nuances here. We're not saying just because, you yeah. are a generator. You can't have some projected tendencies, but we're just talking about the aura right now. So projector aura. So generators are 35 and um, 35. So about 70% of the population are a sacral type, right? So 35%? 35 and 35. So manifesting generators are about 35 and generators are about 35. So this type the the generator type is about 70% of the population. Got it. Okay. Yeah. So then we move to projectors, which are about 20% of the population. And this is, mm. they're very good. They're very, very like high on the wire, right? <laughs> like they're like that bird that can kind of go above the scene and see mm-hmm. what's going on, right? And they're really here to focus. I always, my, my stepdad, jokes that he needs a cut in my my podcasting career because I use him all the time because he's like this project manager that goes on the job and he tells everybody what to do and then he goes back home and takes a nap and then gets up and makes sure everybody's <laughs> <there's... laughs> oh I like his job yes but that, I mean that's really healthy for a projector projector needs is rest. is and I hate even saying needs rest because I know projectors that are very energetic Mm -hmm. But they can't be focusing that energy on work for more than a few hours a day, maybe Mm -hmm. four to six, right? Depending on what kind of projector you are, but you can't focus on work that long. You might have energy to go clean the kitchen or take a walk or read a book or go play with your, you know, kids or grandkids, right? That might be energy you have. I mean, some, some projectors are very low energy types because Projectors in general don't create their own energy. Okay. Hmm. Okay. (laughs) I love it. You're already like, this is a lot. Yeah. Okay. Continue. (laughs) So generators, we're we're creating the sacral energy. Um, It's really correct for a a generator to be like, what did I come here to create? Right? Mm -hmm. It's very funny. My mom cannot wait to retire. Um, I'm looking for like that job that I want to do forever. Right. Because I do not care about retiring. Right. 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 And I'm not saying that there can't be generators that aren't burnt out as heck and they're ready to retire, but that's because they don't know that there's other options out there. Right. 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 But if you're in correct alignment as a, as a generator, that means that we're doing things that light us up. We're creating from a place of like, I've got the energy because this is exciting and I'm going to go do this. And then I'm going to, I'm going to work. Right. You get lost in it. Yeah. You can get lost in it for sometimes I'll work for 16 hours on something. Cause I'm just so mm-hmm. focused. I can't, right. I can't stop. I just can't. I'm the to... same way. Same. Yeah. Way. Yeah. And, and usually you won't hear a projector, a manifestor or a reflector say that. Right. Mm. As we go to these other types, that is usually a generator thing and that's a generator thing when they're in healthy relationship with what they want because when I learned I was a manifesting generator I'm supposed to be like the energizer bunny I was like what me I am exhausted (laughs) I am exhausted but it was years you know I pushed in the military for however many years and then I had these little kids and then I was working these jobs that I hated and dragging myself out of bed every day it was so exhausting I was like, there's no way I'm a manifesting generator with all this energy because I'm none. Right. And it was a very slow build. So it was just get. because you were out of alignment. Yeah. I was doing, saying. I was using the sacral energy for things that I didn't love. Right. And we all have to do things we don't love. Like I have to clean the kitchen, but I love to cook. Right. So then there's always a messy kitchen and then I always have to clean it. But it's like, okay, how can I love this? So it doesn't drain me. So I Mm -hmm. put on an astrology podcast or some music that lights me up. And then I focus on the thing that I'm loving doing while I'm cleaning the kitchen. 
That I'm makes so much sense. Finding ways to enjoy working out, you know, going, you know, all of the things. I'm finding ways to enjoy it because if I can get my sacral engaged and burning positive, good energy, then I'm like off, right? I have all this energy. And then I'm I'm properly feeding the people around me, right? Because I'm creating right. this energy that spills out of me and helps these other types feel energetic and, and positive, right? Mm, that makes so much more sense. I, I love this picture, by the way. Yes. If you if you don't have uh the the video up, just you could Google the human design aura types and look at a picture, but so I just have the picture on, on our video. So we're just having a little bit more clarity. So we've got the big aura that's pouring out. We've got the projector. It's more of a focused aura. Um, it's really mm. interesting. My mom and my stepdad are both projectors. So they they love being in this projector house that has no sacral energy, right? <laughs> because the sacral just like fills you and fills you and fills you. And you need a little break sometimes when you're a projector, right? You need to get out of the aura of people's energy that have this, this sacral filled. So it's, it's interesting watching them, even when they go on vacation, we've all gone as a family. Um, yeah. They come and they see us all and then they go take a nap at home. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's awesome. Get out of your energy. You guys are too much. Yeah. Um, but yeah, they have very focused times that they, that's exactly out. what my son does. He gets home from school and literally just like collapses on his bed. Cause he's a projector and needs, needs downtime. Like, I don't even like disturb him. I don't ask for anything of him for like two hours. He just needs time to like regroup again and rest. And then he's ready to do something. Yeah. But yeah, that's so interesting. He does. He comes home from school every day like that, unless yeah. he's got practice. Oh, my mom lived in the house with eight people as a projector. She would like hide under the table and be like, nobody talk to me. <laughs> oh my gosh <laughs> wow but she said she always yeah was so tired and I'm like well probably because you were surrounded by people at all times you know you went to school there's people you went home there's people there was no break right yeah 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 Super Do they just need like they just need quiet yeah, I, I, I think that at least having a little bit of time to go, you know, maybe some of them like to go in nature or just go in your room or go yeah. somewhere to unwind and get away from all of the energy that kind of pushes, right? Got it. Yeah. Yeah. That's my they, son. They love to plug in for a while, but then it's like, give me a minute, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. And, and, and so, yeah, so we're just kind of weaving our way back and forth. The generator they have this beautiful aura and it's like, okay, now how do I know if I'm in alignment? So a generator is not here to like go out and make things happen, right? Mm -hmm. They're here to respond. So even this podcast is because you sent me that picture and I was like, ah, people need to know the big three. Let's do a <laughs> yes. podcast on that, right? Right, right. So, so had I not asked you that, then you wouldn't have had that idea. No. to respond to. And it wouldn't, if I'm just sitting there at home by myself going, what should I do? What should I do a video on? What should I do? What should I do? You know, like that is not good energy for a generator or a manifesting generator, right? They need things to respond to. And sometimes it could be, I'm watching TV and somebody said something. I'm like, oh yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, but usually it's very good if it comes from another person, right? People that will ask so me much all sense. the time and I don't even know anything sometimes until somebody asks me, I know nothing, mm -hmm. right? I'm just floating right. around. Somebody asked me a question. I'm like, Ooh, yeah, I do know that. Let's, let's yeah. talk about that. Right. Yeah. I feel that that's totally me too. Yeah. So generators are here to respond. So let's say that you're a generator and you're like, how do I get into alignment? It's like, okay, well, first off, let's just respond to your environment, right? Let's right. stop seeing, I need to do this and I need to do this and I need to do this. What is the next thing that's going to come at you and you're going to go yes or no, or we'll go into um, authorities in a little bit, but a sacral would be a yes, no, right? So it's like, 
what can I respond to in my environment to lead me to the next best thing, right? Because that's what that's what human design, I love astrology so much, but it doesn't teach you how do I get into alignment. If mm-hmm. you really learn your human design, it teaches you what does it feel like to be in an alignment? Well, if you're a frustrated generator, you're out of alignment, right? Like that's the not self theme, frustrated. Oh, I'm frustrated. Oh, I'm frustrated. Oh, I'm frustrated. The self theme is satisfaction because you got up, you responded to life and you created something in the world. You Mm -hmm. did all of this work and now you feel like I can go to bed satisfied tonight because I created something, right? Yeah, I feel that too, definitely. Yeah, it's a very different energy, right? Than a projector that's really, their their self-theme is success, right? Projector really wants to feel successful. I always tease that I have a niece and a nephew that are projectors. Everybody in my family is a generator type, right? I have a niece and a nephew, both different families that are projectors. And they're always like, am I your favorite? I'm your favorite, right? And I'm like, yeah, you guys are my favorite, right? (laughs) Because they they care. My other, my generator nieces and nephews, they do not care. They're going and playing, they're creating, they're look at me maybe, but they don't yeah. care to sit there and have a one-on-one conversation. Wow. Are you that my is, favorite? That's <laughs> my son again. And then my daughter is a generator and she could care less. She usually yeah. walks into like a, like a, like a family party or something and like beelines it to like somewhere, like maybe where all the cousins are or something like that, but she could care less about any of the adults, what they think of her, like having a conversation, you know? But my son is like all that one-on-one, you know, and he loves to please. He wants, he wants his aunts to love him, you know, and his his uncles. And yeah, that's so funny. It's just this, like, I mean, not only does he want to tap in, he wants to know them, you know? Yep. Yep. But it's, it's this success. Like, how can I be successful? Right. Yeah. And so that's, that's kind of the downside to being a projector though, because you want success so bad and you see all these generators, 70% of the generators moving and doing and working. You're like trying to keep up all the time. Let me work as hard as you, let me outwork you. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And it's not correct at all. It doesn't, you don't need to work outwork anybody. You just need to show up and shine a light on all these generators or different people out there. Like, ooh, how are you correct? How are you not? Oh, how could you be more efficient? Projectors are really good at systems. Like they're really good at at being efficient with their energy, telling people how to be efficient with their energy. The thing is, the generators to respond, right? So somebody says something to you or something happens, you're like, ooh, there's something there for me, right? The projector is really here to just help people, but they have to be asked because if a projector gives you their information without being asked, A, somebody tells you how to do something and you didn't ask, you're like, I didn't ask for that. I didn't want that. Right. And so now they've just given you like gold and you just threw it away. That doesn't feel successful. Right. No. Exactly. Draining. So now they get this little this little bit of bitterness to them. Mm. It's just this very interesting because I would never call my mom bitter. I always think of this. But we're in a group. She knows something. She's telling them. Especially we used to have girls' nights, so it was all our sisters, right? She's telling yeah. them. And they are like poo-poo, whatever. Oh, I can see it. Like everything in her is just kind of like oh. You know, like I'm giving you, I'm getting, you know, I'm giving you yeah. this good stuff. Why didn't they get it? Why didn't yeah. they take it? Yeah. And at some point it can get so draining that you're just like, why even bother? Right. That's that yeah. little hint of bitterness. Why even bother saying anything? Nah, no, they're not going to get it. Right. Mm. From yes. success to bitterness. Right. Yes. <sighs> yeah. But the thing is, if you just go along and do your thing and you're just feeling successful and you're just shining your lighthouse that I got, when I call a projector that I, I like ask them a question, oh man, they give me gold. When I'm just trying to complain and they're telling me what, oh, no, no, don't do it. Right. Save your energy. Do not tell me what to do if I didn't ask for it. That's Even so fun too. Even at work, yeah. it, it, it projectors go into work 
And they're like trying to tell people, unless they've been invited to give their feedback, it never goes over that well. But if they're invited, it is so good. And people will recognize you and invite you when you're in alignment with that, when you stop giving it away, right? Mm. Mm. Wow. So like you have a you have a projector. I have a projector or I have a generator son that has a very, very strong projector channel, which is the 1858 it wants to correct, right? It's very good at correcting. He'll be a great coach someday, I bet. Mm-hmm. Very good at correcting, seeing everything that went wrong and how to correct it. So how do I feed that in a positive way? I ask him, how was school? How was this? How how should I do this? I try to give all of this positive feedback when he tells me. And then maybe clarify, hey, I didn't ask you for that. You know, like when he tells me, like, we'll be watching a show and on and on and on with corrections. And I'm like, hey, bud, you're ruining this. I don't want to hear that. You know, <laughs> like, but in the nicest way, it's like, how do I right. give you positive feedback when I ask and you give me that? How do I give you maybe constructive criticism when you're using right. it in the wrong way, right? It's like So the- I'm a generator, but do I have any of these other three um, types in me? Like you're saying your son is a generator, but has projector gates. Do I have any of those? Like, what does that mean? So- or am I just straight up generator? Yeah, yeah. You're de- I mean, you're definitely generator. We talked about that 62 um earlier that could be projected. Um most of your circuitry is very tribal. It's very like, let me take care of you. Let me make sure you're safe and healthy. <laughs> right. And that. Um so most of your most of you are generator, but any of those uh you have a few that that could be projector but I don't want to confuse people too much okay okay yeah what's okay what's the orange one or yellow whatever that is okay so so we've talked about generators here to respond right Mm -hmm. when they're in the correct they're sad they're feeling satisfied when they're feeling frustrated a lot it's time to see Ooh, you know am I responding to life am I am I doing things that 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 excite me the projector we have the the theme of bitterness if we're giving all of our gold away and nobody's faking it. Mm. Um, but we're really here to feel successful because we, you know, projectors are magic. We could not do they're, they're the newest type and it's really here to help guide us. Um, and then, so then we go to this one in the orange. Um, if you can't see this, you're on audio. It's just showing us that it's not the the aura is more centered and not pushing out as much as the generator. So this one is the manifester. It's about eight, nine percent of the population. Uh, it just means that you have a motor to the throat, right? So a motor to the throat means we're pushing out information that needs to be shared, right? We're also an inspired type. So a manifester is really here to to kind of just like get inspiration and go do it, right? (laughs) They're not here Mm -hmm. to wait to respond like a generator. The manifester, I mean, sometimes it could be like the CEO, the serial entrepreneur. It's like, let me start this and then hand it to somebody else that's going to do a good job of taking care of it, right? (laughs) Manifestors aren't really here to like do the grind all day long, every day. Um, They're the Nike, just do it, right? Inspiration, go do it inspiration go do it they really the the beautiful thing if everybody really understood their design then they could really just find the right pieces to be able to do this really quick creation and then have the right people in place to take over um but a lot of times we think oh you have to force yourself through things right mm-hmm. so they get like 200 percent energy towards something and then it's like phew, gone. Now I've used it. And now I'm like, unplug, right? They kind of remind me of a cat sometimes, you know, like, (laughs) let's go after it. And then let's go like, lounge somewhere or whatever would be really good for most of them. Not that they ever would want to be seen as lazy, which is what we like to think if you're, you know, putting 200% into something and then needing to unplug. 
And I don't know how long right. this 200% could last, right? Maybe it lasts a week. Maybe it lasts a month. Maybe, you know, like you're all in, but then you're, when you're done, you're done, right? Yeah. I have a nephew who is a manifester. Yeah. Oh man. It's the most powerful. Uh, my, my cousin is a manifester and growing up, I was always like, you're the coolest thing ever, but I don't know what you're going to say or do. And I'm just (laughs) waiting for you to tell me what to do or what to (laughs) do. Oh my gosh. There's always, but the thing is, Ross says this is a repelling aura, right? I don't Mm. love repelling aura. That yeah, kind of makes that's it feel harsh. like, yeah, like this person is repelling. No, right. I'm always drawn to a manifester. Uh, Jennifer Aniston's a manifester. It's really strong aura. Oh, wow. But you don't know what's going to happen. Where are they going to go? What are they going to say? What are they going to do? Mm-hmm. You can't yeah. feel it like a generator. A generator feels a little more reliable and, uh, you know, like you're there and you're comfortable projector is always going to tell you where they're going to be or what they're going to be, you know? Yeah. The manifester, their, their strategy, you know, we had to, to respond. We had wait for the invitation with the projector. Now we're, we're, we're telling everybody, (laughs) we're telling people what is going on. Right. And so a manifester it's to inform, right? A mm-hmm. manifester hates that because they think if you're telling people that you're kind of asking for permission, yeah, this can be a very rebellious kind of like energy, right? Yeah, yeah. Like, I don't want to ask or I don't want to tell somebody and have them tell me I can't, right? Right. But the to inform is for other people, not for you, right? <laughs> because everybody, if you inform people that you're going to go do this project or you're going to go do this thing or you're you're off to do this, they can either say, hey, I could help and they, you can bring them along or they just understand so they can get out of your way because the not self is anger. It's like, get out of my way. I have this this finite resource of energy ready to take off, get out of my way. Wow. I'm just thinking, so my nephew's 20 and that's when I started dating my now husband was when he was born. And so I watched him throughout his 20 years of, and out of the three kids, he was the one that was like, I'm going to tell you when I want to go to bed or, you know, like, why do I have to do it this way? Like, he didn't even want to have to explain. He didn't want to say why he just wanted to do the things. Oh yeah. So why to a manifester? No, thank you. Yeah. No. And so my sister-in-law and my brother-in-law were like, why is he giving us so much grief? The other two are not like this. I don't understand. But now my sister-in-law is like, holy cow, I understand human design now. And I understand where, what he's, you know, where he's coming from. Yeah. But for about 15 years, she was like, why is he so much different than the other two? You know? Wow. And it's like you said, they're only like eight to 10% of the population. So there's not you don't normally come across them yeah, necessarily. So it's like, yeah, especially as a parent, like how do you parent when my other two are in like the higher popularity type ones? Yeah. Well, and that's why I love getting this information out. Like to a parent, it's like, you don't want to squash that because if you are able to squash that from a manifester, it's like they're dimmer and they're not, they're not taking control of their life. Right. Yeah. And that's like a disservice to everybody. To everybody. And yeah, he's not doing what he came here to do. Yeah. But at the same time, it's like, how do I make sure they're safe? I have a nephew that's an emotional manifester, right? Mm. So now we're going to get into authority here and an emotional wave needs time and a manifester wants to go. It's probably the most frustrating type, Mm. you know, like to be a manifester that just wants to go but having this emotional wave that you kind of have to work with as well but he just wants you know my sister's been working with him a lot because when he wants to buy something he wants to buy it now right Mm -hmm. (laughs) it's like how do I get him to sit on it for a minute or he he's just super interesting he goes in he's like I'm the coolest you guys follow me I'll tell you what's up like he just has this kind of swagger 
that a manifester can really have, right? Because they don't really need That's anybody. My nephew. And not yeah. saying that they're like That's how he comes off though. It's like almost like the room is captivated by him, but he doesn't like even give them much of his attention. Like he's not doing anything to to make them want to type the, like he's kind of mysterious and everybody wants to know more, you know? And yeah. he's like, maybe oh, I'll yeah. talk to you. Maybe I won't. Yeah. You yeah. know? <laughs> I know. That's how I always feel. I'm like, oh man. And then when you know somebody's a manifester, you're like, I yeah. don't want to reach out to them because they might not be in the mood. And then I don't want to make them feel guilty because they're not in the mood and not, you know, and then I get in my head about it. And it's like, right. you know, right. so I usually leave manifestors be for the most part. And it's not like, you know, I know that when they have like, oh, I should call her or I should, we should go out. They're going to do it. And then yeah. it's going to be correct for them. And that's cool, yeah. right? Then I'm ready to respond. And it's always a yes, because I'm excited to hang out with my <laughs> manifestor people that are excited to hang out with me. Right, right. right. Oh, okay, what's the blue one? Okay, so now we're moving. If you're, uh, once again, on the audio, this is just, it's kind of like a foggy, swirly, mirror-y look, you know, like you're like, what's going on with this? It's all over. Um, so this is a reflector. And so we we saw that, you know, the generator had that sacral power. The projector um, has a motor somewhere, but not to the throat. The, uh, well, I guess you don't always have to have a motor. The manifester has a motor to the throat. And then this one has nothing filled in, right? This is one, yeah. maybe 2% of the population there's no, no design or not no design. <laughs> none of, none of the little centers are filled in. Right. Yeah. So this is what we call a reflector and they're really here to, to be this mirroring person for people. Right. And I always feel pretty lucky because there's only one to two per percent of the population. My best friend growing up, my, uh, another one of my cousins is a reflector. I was going to so, say, do you know any reflectors? Okay. So I grew up she was my best friend. And mm -hmm. then I went off to the, the military. I was in the Navy and my best friend that I still talk to almost every single day is a reflector. <laughs> so I'm like, I feel so lucky to have this one-on-one -on -one relationship with reflectors to really understand because I bought, when I was first into human design, I bought my, my best friend, that's the reflector, a human design book on reflectors. Mm. And she just felt it was super disempowering. I always felt it was a little bit disempowering too, because it's like uh, this energy of this energy of um, it, it's inconsistent, right? The best thing you could say about a reflector is they're going to be somebody new every single day. But when mm. you see that there's nothing filled in they say oh they're a non-energy type oh reflectors can't work in the regular world i know reflectors that work in the regular world right mm -hmm. the best you can say is it's inconsistent because when we look at transits just like in astrology you're getting yeah. you're getting a transit to different places and sometimes your kind of energy is kind of acting like a projector sometimes a reflector or a, a generator sometimes a manifester you're somebody different all the time a different energy type. You, you, you show up one day and you're like, let's go. And you show up another day and you're like, let me just talk to you. You show up one day and you're like, let me create, right? You're mm. inconsistent. So but it's not necessarily like, you're not like a chameleon where you're kind of morphing with the person that you're next to. You're just different because it's a whole different day. Does that make there, sense? Yeah, there is. Because at first, I when you were describing it, I was thinking empath. This is somebody who's picking up somebody else's energy, and that's what's causing them to um, seemingly be different than the day before. They can be very empathic. Okay. But not necessarily, right? Okay. The, yeah. the, let me find my thing again. So the mirroring is... It's, it's just a very interesting, and you, if you're a reflector, I want you to hear this. And if you know a reflector, I love the, the, the statement that Brahm makes that it's like, they're like Teflon, right? 
So they go into a room and they're very empathic and they feel the energy of a group or a room. Let's pretend like we're in a tribe, right? So Mm -hmm. back in the day, we had tribes. Your generators are your workers. They're getting stuff done. Your projectors are making sure everybody's doing what they are. The manifestors are making sure we're moving the camp or whatever we got to do. They're like, the reflector is the person in the camp that's making sure like, what's the health of this, right? Mm. They're reflecting to the tribe. If you have an unhealthy reflector, your community, your group, your, your thing that you're surrounded in, is unhealthy right wow so the the the, like my friend will show up she'll be like "Ooh, this energy is terrible i'm out right go into a restaurant (laughs) yeah yeah go into a restaurant go into a family unit go into you know uh she went she studied um what is it she used to love to travel and went to an ashram what is the it's like breath work and yoga I want to somatic. It starts with a K. Oh, I want I want to say like Krishna, but it's not Krishna. It's a type of yoga. Um, I can't. I can't remember what it's called. I can't but either. It's it's got this person that's kind of you know leading them, and you do these breathwork techniques that are kriya kriya yoga. Oh, yes, so, yes, yes, yes. The so kriyas. Go, yes, yes, yes. So she went to one of these, and she was like, no. This is unhealthy. These people are unhealthy, you know, that, and maybe it was just the people there at that time were so were looking for something and needed help. Right. Yeah. But she just felt right away. She was like, out, out. (laughs) Wow. She's just very good at sensing the energy. And while she's there, it's like, it feels terrible. But as soon as she gets out of it, it's like Teflon, right? The egg in the pan just slides right off, right? There's no leftover residue. Mm. So all of us that have all this openness, we can feel the residue a little bit, right? You're right. You're right. around an unhealthy person and you've got an open center. You can feel the residue a little bit, right? Like you have to do some cleansing to get that out of there. Mm-hmm. She's very good at letting it go. Mm, that's pretty cool. Yeah. Which is healthy, right? Yeah. Yeah. Because she has to <laughs> take that on so deeply. Um, but yeah. Uh, and this one is. They say that there's this like, it's a lunar being. So you're waiting for the 30 days of the moon to make a decision. Um, I would say it's better. We'll just start with kind of authorities right now, because this one is an, is an outer authority. It's a lunar authority. So not inner body, but outer. Mm -hmm. And so, um, so yeah, so she, she does the sounding board technique a lot. So I think this is really healthy for reflectors to do the sounding board, which is like something happens and she calls me and talks about it. And mm-hmm. as she's talking about it to someone, she can start to understand how she feels about it. Oh, okay. I find myself kind of like that sometimes. You do have a little bit of sounding board energy, but we'll talk about your authority. Okay. Um, yeah. Sometimes I just feel like as I'm talking to somebody, I'm like, oh, I just worked that out my <laughs> in my conversation. Yeah. It's weird. And that's because you have so much tribal. It's really, really good for you to work with people, Mm. right? Okay. Let me come to my people. Let me come (laughs) to my people and work this out, right? (laughs) Right. And that's your your emotional authority too. So um, so yeah. So how do we feel about the different types right now? Good. Good. I mean, I had a little bit of like a, a knowledge. This definitely went deeper, but yeah, I'd say you yeah. You explained it well. Okay, so our next we're going to show the emotional waves, right? <laughs> and we let's see how we do because I know you were like, "Oh my gosh, when we were talking about this earlier." So, now we're going to go to authority. So, 50% of us all are emotional beings, right? We're led by our emotional wave. Our authority is to feel the emotion of something before we make a decision, right? So, but for this example that you have on the computer, this person's authority is sacral, right? Yes. So, and we were going over this just before we jumped on here. There are seven different 
authorities. Uh, yeah. Right. So we but, have but you're saying 50 percent are emotional. Yeah. So half the population is emotional. So that makes sense to talk about that. But there are six different um, authorities and you could be the listener could be one of those six. Right. Yes. So you're going to see. I don't know if it always says inner because there's inner and outer authorities, but on this one, it says inner, right? Okay. And so it says sacral. So we'll go to sacral second, just because it's not the most popular, right? The most popular is. The emotional. Emotional. So 50% okay. are emotional, right? You could be a an emotional projector. You could be an emotional manifester. You could be right. an emotional generator. So for example, there's four family members that live in my house, my two children, and my husband, three out of four of us are emotional authorities. And then I have one sacral. Yeah. So I didn't understand that you had to then break down what the emotional authority even meant. I didn't realize there were so many different waves of emotion. So that's what Angela's going to go through right now, but I didn't realize you had to even break that down. Yeah, so. I I just think because then, then once we can get a little bit, so if we're just talking about emotional authority, it just means do you have this this filled in here? This if we're if you're watching the video, I'm just kind of circling it. If not, it's to the right of the sacral is a little triangle. It's the solar plexus, which is where the emotions are, right? So, so an emotional authority just means that you have a gate that connects that, that lights that up. So it's, it's defined. And if you are defined emotionally, that's your authority. And so why do we even care about any of this? Because all of this sounds like mumbo jumbo and it feels overwhelming to, to new people. It's like, mm -hmm. what do we want? We want to live in alignment. We want to live our purpose. Our, we want to be led, right? <laughs> We're like, what did I come here for? And how do I get there? I want to be happy. I want to be filled with purpose, right? Evolving on purpose. Yeah, and I feel like it's so important when you say in or out of alignment, that means, are you, do you feel balanced? Do you feel like every single day, like you want to get out of bed and accomplish and, you know, or are you in burnout out of balance kind of thing is high, kind of like how I look at it. Yeah. So yeah, I'm sorry, go ahead. <laughs> well, and no, that's exactly, it's like, why does this matter? And for me, it's like, okay, if I'm not an emotional authority, but I have decided to look up whether my husband is or whether my children are, or whether my mother was, you know, my mom was an emotional authority. It's like, it gives you so much more understanding. And that's what I, that's what I love about human design and astrology. When I can understand somebody else, oh my gosh, do I show up differently for them? Mm hmm mm hmm and so in my house, I'm the emotional, which I would say I feel like the least emotional in the house, but I'm the emotional authority. And, and why do you think that is? is you're, yeah, you're emotional, but you're the least emotional. So how does that work? So you have two choices if you're emotional or not emotional. If you're emotional authority, it means you're filled in and you have your own defined emotional wave. If you're open there, that means you do not have a defined center. That means you're open to the conditioning of the people around you. <laughs> okay. So when I see somebody that's not emotional, 50% of the people that are not emotional, and sometimes they can be very focused in the mind so they don't think about their emotions as much. This is another way I like to look at um, astrology to see where maybe the moon is. If it's mm. in an air house, maybe it's more thinking emotions. Like you're right. Is, you know? Right. Right. So there's lots of ways to kind of look at this in, in a deeper context, but if you have this open anywhere we're defined, it's like we're putting out a signal, right? This is something that we create and we put out a signal anywhere that you're open, that you're not colored in. That's where you receive signals from the outside world, from the people around you. Right. Can I just ask on my human design chart is my Am I open or defined or? You're defined because you're an emotional authority. You're, it says solar plexus or emotional authority. So there. all emotional authorities are defined. Yes. 
Okay. And if you're so open, we, where the, this guy here, today's chart is open, right? Right. It's right. not got color on it. Yeah. So this one's a sacral. It could be other, um, other authorities. But if it's anything other than emotional authority or it says solar plexus there, it is open. Mm. Because if you're an emotional, it's the hierarchy, right? If you have that filled in, you are an emotional authority. That's the hierarchy. Okay. So okay. 50% of the population, emotional, non-emotional, right? The reason that sometimes you feel like you're less emotional when you're an emotional authority is because you have a pretty set wave, a steady growth, or like we're looking here, the waves, right? You have mm -hmm. that 59.6, which is this slow and steady wave. This one feels the most comforting. It's that masculine tribal, right? Let me mm -hmm. meet you. Let me let you know I can take care of you. I'm a safe person, mm -hmm. right? It's mm -hmm. this very slow growth towards connection that feels really good, right? Right. Uh, you could have the the tribal, right? Right. So tribal is other focused, right? The people in your house, the the the, the people around you, um, and so that's this like, well, nothing really bothered me. You know, this is the thirty seven forty, the channel of community, which my mom has. Love you, mom. Thanks for letting me talk about you. Um, well, Todd we, has that too, right? Yeah, your husband. My has husband. That. My sister has this, the 1949, the channel of synthesis. Um, so, so this is tribal. And so it's like, yeah, nothing really bothers me. Nah, it didn't bother me. I'm okay. I'm steady. I can handle it. It's fine. Bah! Let me freak <laughs> out. And I always right. say it this way. And everybody that ever has this always, except you have two of them. So, yeah. So it's like that one probably doesn't show up as much. Right. Mm-hmm. But that one shows if you that's the only one you have every time I've ever given that story. If you know somebody or you are that, you know it. Right. Right. It feels like you're expanding and expanding, and expanding. And all of a sudden it's like, I'm going to blow. Somebody says one thing that maybe yeah. wasn't even a big deal and right. you blow and you're right. like the person on the other side is like, what in the world just happened? And I just asked just you what day of the week it was. <laughs> <laughs> you, they don't know that you've been building up right. all of the little indiscretions that have happened to you for the last however long it took, right? And then it blows yeah. and then you're okay. You reset, right? So we talk yeah. about how to do this in a healthier way, right? To have a little <laughs> bit more like, okay, I feel full. How do I get rid of this? Maybe I can talk about it. You know, let's use my words. Oh my gosh, that wasn't a big deal. It just felt like it at the moment. Give me a minute. I'll be okay. Let's talk about it, right? Yeah. Growing up, it was always like, what in the world? Now I'm grounded over this. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. I'd love to know what my mom is too. That would explain a lot of things. <laughs> yes. yes. Uh, but yeah, it just, and, and really like a hug, a hand on the back, a, a hand on the hand is really good mm -hmm. for this, right? Yeah. Because they, it, it's like, Oh, am I still okay? Does my tribe still love me? Right? Right. Oh my God. So my husband. Yeah. They, he needs the reassurance. Yeah. <laughs> it just feels good, you know? Yeah. Um, the individual. So, so we have circuitry, you know, it's like collective is like, I'm really here to share this with the world. Not you, not you, but the world, right? Uh, tribal is like my family, my people, my work people, my, you know, like my little, whoever is like close to me that would be in my tribe. Right. Right. And then individual is like, I have a passion to get out and I need, it's focused on what's going on here. Right. Me. And so individual could be the 2212 or the 3955. Um, if you're looking at those, those lines, those gates that gate one and gate two connect. Now you got your channel. So this one's like, I'm steady Eddie, and then I might flip out. I'm steady Eddie. I might just go like, Boo. like I'm done. I'm turned off. You know, like it's a high up, up, like either really excited or flip out about something. <laughs> and then I'm back to steady. Like this is like moments, right? Maybe a few hours. Yeah. Uh, and then like, 
a really low drop. Like it might, might feel like a little depressive. I know somebody with this line and it's like, you know, the stars are shining out of his eyes when it's up. (laughs) And then you're like, are you even there? Like you are not the same person that, you know, down, right. You know, it's, it's very interesting, but most of the time it's very steady. It's only Mm -hmm. like these little blips, right. Right. And then there's, yeah, there's collective. This is the, this is the wave that I have. Um, this, and you, you said your son has this. I was gonna say, I think Cam does too. Yeah. For me. Um, so mine is more about experiences, right? So it's like, oh, this is going to be great. I can't wait to have this experience or this thing or, um, whatever's going to happen. I've, I've jumped into something again, the 35 loves change, right? <laughs> I've jumped into something and now I'm yeah. like, what did I do? You know, the, <laughs> the most insane was like me jumping into joining the military. And I was like, it's going to be great. I'm going to go, I'm going to be in the Navy. I'm going to travel the world, global force for good. And it didn't like occur to me until the bus was pulling up. Like, Shh, what did I do? You know, like, right. It right. Was like, Sounded cool. (laughs) And and that has happened to me a lot. Um, But even in the everyday, you know, like getting really excited about something and then like fall off a cliff. I'm done. This thing is terrible. I'm never touching it again. Um, This is what really was a turning point for me was when I learned about this wave and I could figure out that, yes, I am a Gemini and I like shiny things. And yes, I am like a manifesting generator. And I like to jump from this topic and this topic and this topic. Right. Yeah. But it was always like, oh, the grass isn't always greener. Oh, why? You know, like nobody believed that I could have any staying power because I would be like, I've got the best business idea in the entire world. And then it would be like the next time they saw me, I was done with it. It was terrible. I saw all the things that were going to be terrible about it. I've moved on. (laughs) But now it's like, I I get just a little bit more. It's like, I've seen me do it in the past so many times that I'm a little bit more like in tune with, okay, what am I growing and why? And I'm using this growth. And when I hit that, that top and I fall off Mm -hmm. the cliff, It's like, this is just a day for Netflix, right? Like I'm not getting anything done positively, right? My positive energy was spent for the last four days. I am done for a day. I'm going to go on a walk. I'm going to watch a movie. I'm going to do something that my like little emo self that thinks is all terrible doesn't really affect, right? And then I'm going to get up the next day and I'm going to build that emotional, you know, force to move again. And I'm not mm. gonna make it mean something. Got it. And I and I can take the information, right? All of the emotional waves, you're getting information from the highs and the lows. You're getting information from like, ooh, instead of jumping, I'm gonna like see the whole beauty of something, right? All of the good things and all of the bad things. And then when I get to a calm, I'm gonna make a decision. So that's the emotional authority, whether or not you have any of these, whichever one of these mechanics of the way that you have, it's like the, 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 the thing is to know that it takes time to make a decision. Anybody that an emotional, the the emotional authority is really not here to just jump and make a decision. Right. And that's what I do. I'm like, I know, I know two seconds. And I'm like, yes, that's exactly what I want. I'm going to buy 10 of them. And then they come and I'm like, whoa. Why didn't I give myself 24 hours? Yeah. (laughs) And that's like a rule that I've made myself now. I put stuff in my Amazon cart. Even sometimes when I just feel like I'll go to Target and I'll fill my cart and then I'll put it all away. Right. (laughs) I just needed to have it for a second. Yeah. Yeah. Because I don't want to buy impulse buy and then be like, Mm -hmm. why did I buy that? Now Mm -hmm. I've got something else I don't need. Right. 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 Or even a program. Like I almost, because people love to get you with like 24 hours on this program. Right. Yes. I almost bought it. And I was like, man, I need this so bad. And then I was like, no, I have to wait three days. I have a three day waiting period, no matter what, if Mm. they want me to buy it, they probably don't know me anyways, because everybody should build in that you should have time. Right. 50% of people need time. Three days later, I did not want that program at all. Yeah. I've actually found myself doing that more and more as I've gotten to a more mature age. Um, (laughs) But 
sometimes though it's it's hard because like like we've talked about with a generator when something really lights you up it's hard to it's hard to wait but that's the maturity piece later on it's like okay and I've done that too even with courses and stuff because I just want to know all the things and learn all the things yeah but I have said no before and then I wake up the next day I'm like that was the right move yeah so back to the emotional waves, if somebody wanted to figure out which emotional wave they are, where on the chart do you find it? So we're just looking for where this is, right? So mine is the 36, 50, or, um, 36, 36 50. 35. Oh, because it's the throat one there. I was like, why is that? That's not it. The 36, 35 right here. Um, so that's this one. And then the other, mm -hmm. a collective, collective is always on the outside. Which it'll say it, right? Um, well, maybe it doesn't. Okay. And I was going to yeah, say, I never teaching. knew that there was different okay. waves. Okay. So you can find this chart anywhere by Googling the emotional waves, human design, mm -hmm. right? You go to images, you can see this chart. So mine is collective. Uh, your son's is collective, right? 30, 41. So these are collective. Uh, these are individual, the individuals in the middle. So 1222 or 5539. Uh, How do you know which one is like the, the it would example be filled in, right? So, okay. Filled in. So see how this one's got the 36. Yes. The 35 was filled in here and this was a full channel. Yeah. So you have the 596, right? And you have, what do you have? You have the 596 and you have the, the 4037. So you just see if it was filled in, right? So like this right. example here, this one's filled in. That's a so it has to be colored in all the way from yeah. one end to the other. Yeah. So this one's got the 14.2 would be a channel, right? And it doesn't matter yeah. if it's red and black or red and black. It just has to be filled in by a color. Why can't means. they make it one color? Why they got to do two colors? It confuse me. <laughs> well, because the red means it's unconscious. The black means it's conscious Aye. and the red black means that you have the unconscious and conscious, <laughs> oh my God. which is where we're going way deeper at another time. Uh, I know. I know. And okay. We probably went too big with the, the waves, but I just think it's important. Well, I could just see like my sister-in-law watching this and her be like, how do I figure out which one of these waves am I? And how do I, Yeah. because it doesn't say it on the chart. Yeah. It might, uh, I like some of the other charts. We just talked about doing this one because it was. Um, the original. Of, yeah, this is one of the original. So we went with this. Some of them do say, but yeah, you're just looking for. So we have gates is just one of them, right? So this would be a gate. This would be a gate. This would be a gate. Channels are the whole shebang, right? Both of them are plugged in. So then this would be colored in, this would be colored in like it is here. Mm. So you're just, so it's, it says the channel. So let me see if I get this right. The um, example on the board that we have right now is the emotional wave would be a 5720. This is not an emotional wave because it's open. Okay, we'll do we'll do mine, right? I'll just pull mine um, real quick. You can put mine up if you want. If you already had it off to the side. So this is just my program. So Heather. So you're filled in here, right? Mm-hmm. You've got this okay. one and this so one. the other one wasn't emotional. Okay. No, no. I That's am emotional. Good. Yeah. So the channels that I am. And is it, it just uh, has to be connected to this, right? Because the solar plexus is lit up. So then we're looking for a channel, a full channel. So a full channel here, a full channel here means you have two emotional waves. We'd go to that little graph and find which one you are. And like, But they're not is, a one full color. There's white and red. So th my program, because I, I like the black background, Oh. shows white and red instead of black and red oh okay. <laughs> okay i know i know now we've now we've rabbit hole sorry everybody i know yep <laughs> um right. okay so 
Now we're going to move to sacral authority, right? Sacral authority is way less complicated. It doesn't have any other sacrals. So, so okay. So if you're an emotional, you're complicated, right? Mm-hmm. You're complicated. If you're a non-emotional, probably less complicated. So let's just go through some of them. So sacral uh, just means that you're a generator type, right? Because if you have that sacral defined, you're a generator type. So you have to be a generator of some sort to be a sacral authority. If you're not emotional, you're a sacral, right? So we go okay. to sacral. So that that one's just right here. It says inner sacral. So does that mean I'm both then? I'm sacral and emotional? So emotional takes the cake, right? It's in the hierarchy. So if you're okay. defined emotionally, mm-hmm. that means you're an emotional. You do have a sacral. Your sacral may or may not say yes, no, which probably does, right? That's what you're living right. on is your sacral response, right? Right. Yeah, well, let's do it. You're forgetting that you're still going to have that emotional wave no matter what, right? So a sacral okay. is a yes, no, right? If you're a sacral being, if you're a generator that has a yes, no, everybody in my house is a generator with a sacral authority. It means they're yeah. a yes, no, right? So mm-hmm. I don't say, what do you want for dinner tonight, kids? Because <laughs> they're never going to answer you. <laughs> I don't know. Food. Right. You know? Right. I say, do you want pizza? Do you want burger night? Do you want spaghetti? Right? Like, I give them maybe one option that I, maybe I have two options in mind, right? Or I just say, this is what we're having. And they say, oh, or, you know, yeah. <laughs> But usually I try to have a few options because I know how important it is to teach them how to engage their sacral, right? Mm. So I give them one option. No, I give them the next option, right? It's a, it's, or where do you want to go out to eat, right? Where do you want to eat? The, you know, most of us are sacral people, right? Right. I don't want to, you know, you to ask where we go to eat, right? So those are just little ways to like tap in. I know that the age old question, even my mom and stepdad hate as projectors figuring out what, what to eat. So it's not like it's ever easy, but never it's a yes, no, right. Mm -hmm. It's a yes, no authority. It's a, does this light me up or does this shut me down? Mm -hmm. If you make that choice, even though it shuts you down, you have to take from other areas of the body to make yourself go right. That Mm -hmm. willpower that runs out, right. Yes. If it's a yes, you have all the energy in the world. And, you know, I see this with my generators. They're super busy. It's always a yes for sports. It's always a yes to play with their friends. They can go play forever, right? Right. It's a no to clean their room. (laughs) They cannot get off the couch. They cannot move. (laughs) Right. Their legs are broken. (laughs) I'm exhausted. They can't do it. No capacity. Yes. But yeah, it, it's very simple. If you have this sacral authority, um, maybe at some point you learn to shut this down, but it's a, it's a very, it's a primal yes, no. Some children, even when they're generator children that are very primal like this, they grunt a lot as kids. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, it's very primal, right? Wow. It doesn't even get to the throat all the time. Yeah. My son's a manifesting generator. The sacral goes up to the throat and he can tell me everything he wants all the time. He's very individual chart focused. <laughs> There's always <laughs> something he wants. Always. <laughs> right. Oh my God. Is that your younger one? Yes. Yes. I can yes. tell. You have, you have seen in action. Uh, right. But yes. So, so it's a yes, no. Sometimes when I first learned about this, I really thought sacral was better than emotional, right? Because yeah, oh, I have to wait for clarity. I can't ever figure it out in the moment. I'm wishy washy. I forgot to say, as a as an emotional authority, you're never completely certain. It's like an eighty yeah. percent, right? Like I'm eighty percent okay with doing this. Now I'm gonna go take the leap, and maybe it's gonna work, and maybe it's not. The sacral is much more of a yes no, right? Yeah. If you yeah. really listen to this yes no. It's just like, yes, no, right? Like a lot of human design really are people that have this sacral and they learn how to do this. Yes, no. It's like 
should I drive through this fast food place? Yes, no. And then they're like, yeah. Oh, I feel good. I had a Big Mac. And I'm like, okay, <laughs> wonderful for you. you know, my right. emotional authority doesn't work that way. But it's like sometimes there's this yes to like jump off this thing, to like go off in this new direction. And they don't have any information why it's a yes. None, right? <laughs> If you're an emotional authority, it's like you have days of all the great things and all the terrible things before you really should be getting to that 80% certainty of this is where I'm going. Mm. The sacral is yes, no. You don't get the information. Right. It's you just know now. it is. Yeah. Yeah. And it might change, right? Today, it's a yes. Tomorrow, it's a no, right? Yeah, that makes sense. So it's a very that. interesting, I mean, it's a very easy yes, no, right? It's pretty simple. If your kids are I, I'm yes, thinking no. of my daughter who's sacral and she pretty much can let me know within seconds of what she wants. Yeah. You know, no, yes, no, yes. Like, yeah. bam, bam. Yeah. She's pretty good at it. My kids are too, because that's what I've always done with them. I want them to listen to their sacral authority. I want them to be lit up by life and choose things that light them up. Mm -hmm. um, now, I mean, we talked about your daughter feeling more emotional in the house, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. She's She doesn't have that emotional center filled up, right? I can be emotional, right? I can be very excited. And I can't be like, Ooh. But for the most part, I'm pretty steady because it's my own wave, right? Mm -hmm, my mm -hmm. my emotions are my emotions. When you have that emotional little triangle there open, other people's emotions can kind of um, expand in your body. And when you start to realize it, you know that they're not your emotions anymore. But when you don't know they're not your emotions, right. it's very uncomfortable, right? Yes. And so she's starting to learn that at age 13, but- you know, we've had many, many conversations and, you know, we're doing human design, but like I said, a couple of nights ago, she and I were looking at her astrology charts and whatnot. And same thing, like, because she's like the Pisces more, um, some of the shadow is picking up other people's energy my, and not realizing it. My son has so much Pisces energy and a lot of the Pisces are, are right here in the emotional authority, right? Mm -hmm. but he doesn't have any channels so he's open but he's got mm -hmm. all of these ways to connect to feel right yeah so it's like i could feel this and i could feel this and i can right. feel this and I could, you know it's like it's very it's very it's got a lot of trigger points right like yes. this one you know this one's mm -hmm. just got that 55 which is a pisces and, and 36 which is oh my gosh <laughs> the emotional weight of the world <laughs> um but it's open to other people spilling out and triggering that and making you feel it expanded. My, my husband, I used to always get so irritated because I'm like, I'm always calm for you. You can come home almost every day frustrated with the traffic and then this and then that and blah, these big emotions. Yeah. And then you're fine after you clear it. Right. Right. And I'm always the one listening and clearing it, letting you clear it. And then I come home and I'm upset and you like go to 200. <laughs> Why can't you be calm for me? Right? Rory, just be my rock. Yeah. I'm like, my sounding board. once in a while. And then when I learned this, I was like, oh, it feels very uncomfortable. I was like, the house is burning down if I'm upset, right? The kids are crying. The husband's yeah. yelling at yeah. them to be quiet because he's emotionally whatever. This is exactly, you're describing my household, especially when my kids were little. Like Todd was always the one like, he couldn't, he was like overstimulated. Everything was like getting under his skin, you know, whatever. And, and I would have to ride that emotional wave where I had to stay steady, Eddie, calm to bring him back down. Yeah. And, 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 and his is his emotional wave, right? It's triggered because all the things built up and, and he's very sensitive to that. But your daughter's is because it's, expanding in her body and it's uncomfortable my kids yeah. and my husband it was expanding in their body and it's uncomfortable all that emotional energy felt uncomfortable so now I'm very careful I am the sounding board for them let them get it out and then they're fine when they're by right. themselves they're fine they don't have mm -hmm. these crazy emotional waves right yeah but when they have to interact with all us crazy humans that have these crazy emotional waves 
they have to feel it and it's very uncomfortable. It's, it's more uncomfortable than it is for us, us to feel it. Mm. That makes sense. So that's why sometimes I say you're an emotional authority and people are like, I am not as emotional as my unemotional, whatever. This, uh, back to the original question to you, this is what I was saying. I'm like, I'm emotional for my authority. Does that mean I'm a hot mess all the time? You're like, no, <laughs> but you had to like explain that to me. And that I just, I thought every time I would see something on Instagram about having emotional authority, I thought that meant I'm like in the corner sucking my thumb, you know, like constantly upset, but this makes so much more sense to me now. And there are moments of crisis when you have to make a decision and you're not ready to make it, that mm. it feels very uncomfortable to be an emotional authority, right? Yeah. When you can get to that calm, it's like, I'm 80% certain I can do it, right? Right. Um, my mom has that 40, 37. I remember her making the decision to build this house. You know, it was like, I'm, I'm going to do it. Right. And this is a willpower thing, right? I'm going to do it. But she mm -hmm. cried every single day while she's putting those tiles down by herself. You know, Like she's oh. like, Oh, I took off this too much. I can't do this. Yeah. But she did it anyways. Right. Because she had made the emotional decision. She had all of the emotional decision behind her. She's going to do it. She has the willpower to do it, but doesn't yep. mean she's not going to cry because it sucks yep. in the moment. Right? right. That sounds a lot like me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to get it done, but I'm going to yeah. probably have a breakdown in yeah. the middle. <laughs> and that's what your 4037 looks like too, because it's like, I'm getting it done for my community. She was getting her house done for this vision of family. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Wow. Okay. So yeah. So we've gone back and forth between emotional and sacral. Those are the most common. Uh, we'll talk about splenic next. So that's just to the left of the sacral. Uh, splenic is, this one's really tough for people. I know a lot of splenic authorities, especially in today's age. Splenic is, it's kind of the fear center. So we've got emotions or we've got fears, right? Mm. It's kind of the fear center. Not that the, the anybody that has the spleen defined or undefined or super fearful, but it does contain some of these, like what keeps me safe, right? It's mm -hmm. very in the now. It's in the moment, just kind of like the sacral is in the moment. Spleen is even more in the moment. This moment, is this safe or not? Wow. This so it's not a, necessarily yes or no. It's a, uh, is it safe or not? And this is like a whisper. Mm. So the sacral is very much like, Ooh, this lights me up. Ooh, this does not. The spleen is like a whisper. It's like this whispered intuitive knowing, right? Mm -hmm. And it's a yes until it's a no. So when you have the spleen, you're always checking in. And this is mostly like safety. Do I have the energy for this? Is this going to be good for me? And it's always checking in. It's a yes until it's a no. And when it's a no and you hear that whisper like no, like people that have this that are really good at it, they booked a trip and they're like, I'm not going on this trip. Wow. That's a lot of like all in on this spleen thing, right? Right. And then you right. find out, let's say you feel the no and then you go anyways and then everything is wrong, right? Mm -hmm. the, the, the you, they lose your luggage and they do that, you know, like nothing works out and you're like, man, I should have listened to that. You listen to it, you rebook the trip, it's going to work out, right? Right. But it's a really hard one. Uh, my, I always go back to my stepdad. He's a splenic projector. He's like, he's in it. He's he's at the party. He's hanging out with us. And he's like, no. He goes in his room. He's done. <laughs> wow. It's like, he knows when enough is enough. And sometimes for his job or for a family vacation or something, he has to keep going. But it's not going to be good for anybody if he does, Right. Do you know the percentage of the population that's splenic? I don't. It's it's definitely, it's going to be emotional. Then probably sacral is the next. So 50% emotional. Sacral is probably mm. the next biggest. Mm -hmm. uh, splenic. I'm not sure what the percentage is on that. Okay. I believe you're usually a splenic projector. So projector is 20% and then you could be an emo you could be a lot of different types of projectors. So, hmm. so yeah, so splenic 
that that is that um yeah we talked about your your son's a projector emotional projector you could be a splenic projector you could be now i've got to go to my list because there's not as many <laughs> of the rest of the kinds it, it's a very small small i was going to say yeah we're really getting down to the uh, yeah so now we're moving to ego right mhm so ego authority just means that um this motor here is is involved which is the heart center or they call it the heart ego right and so when you're an ego authority it's it's very much like an i right like I mean, whether you like him or you don't like him, Donald Trump has an ego authority. I believe, or no, he's a he's a sacral, I bet. But he has his ego defined. It's very much like I am, you know, like. Oh, OK. But and it's not even like a negative. Right. There's no negative here. It's just like I it's came different. here to kind of live through what is best for me. Right. OK. Yeah. How is this going to work for me? How am I? And, and usually if you're in the highest, right, when we learn anything about human design or gene keys or astrology, there's a low, a shadow level, like I want it all, right? Like grabby ego, mm -hmm. or there's mm -hmm. like the more heart centered, which if I do what's right for me, I'm doing That's what's right for everybody. That's going to help the collective. Yeah. 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 So I wonder if sometimes people that get labeled as like um, self-centered, we'll say, are more that egoic yeah authority i mean in a really healthy sense you're teaching people how to take care of themselves right i'm worth it mm -hmm. i am worthiness is a big thing about the the mm. heart center ego willpower this is where willpower is this yeah this is somebody with a really strong willpower usually if they're an ego authority mm. can make a correct decision uh tony robbins has a really strong will center here oh wow yeah. And so it's like, it's really strong and it can show people, Hey, I can, I can take control of my life and I can be will ego centered driven, but it's going to help everybody know that we all deserve that. Right. 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 We deserve. Hmm. I like to, that. Yeah. Um, the next one. Okay. So self-projected. So self-projected is when you have the G center, which is in the center, it's the other heart chakra. So the heart chakra and human design is split between the G center and the, um, the ego or heart center. So you split it mm -hmm. and the, the, the G center is really much about love and direction. So if you have really strong lines here, like this person here that we're looking at has the spleen to the the g center and the mm -hmm. sacral to the g center and this <laughs> like they have a lot of energy towards that they're really going to help people you know directed to self love to resources to loving the body you know like these are these are some of the things that the g center does right is you, mine you... colored in i'm only curious because like that's like i i feel you have loved... you have the 515 which um, this is about like, I'm making decisions to guide, um, the five and the 15 are really like ideals, but like the five is like, I'm going to put a practice in place, like a really good mm. practice or something. Um, and the 15 is like, oh, but I'm going to keep it a little bit fluid. Right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but this one, uh, this, this line, not to get too deep into any of that, but that 515, it really, um, really bound like people are kind of drawn to it it's like i know how to do practices that are really good and so people mm -hmm. around you are like oh i want to get on board or like my son yeah. does it they always say you have to keep your energy up because if you go down the whole team goes down right <laughs> oh my god it's like this <laughs> it's like no this pressure aura, this aura right from the sacral so uh so yeah that's kind of like helping guide people right yeah so it's definitely like a guidance. It's a guidance system for yourself, but also for others. Because if you have that not filled in, then you're more of like what we call the chameleon. It's like you're finding the right person to tie your wagon to, and they're going to get you there. Or if you mm. have it defined, you're going to get you there and you're going to take people with you, 
right? Okay. So self-projected is like, I have the way, but I have to speak it, right? Mm. So you're speaking it out loud so that people can get on board, right? And that's kind of your authority is you're always kind of speaking it or directing so that you can get to where you're going and people can get there with you. Got it. Uh, The next one. So that was the last of inner authority. There's a couple, these are going to be, not very many people have them. Sounding board is an outer authority. So that would be if you like my niece is a self-projected projector, which means that she just has her head and Ajna, the, the kind of two mind systems are, are connected and that's it. So hers is very much sounding board, right? So it's very much saying what she's thinking out loud, even before she thinks it, right? Just saying it, speaking. And then you get so much information by hearing what you say. It doesn't even matter if somebody's giving you feedback. It's hearing what you say because it's an outer authority. So you just have to say it and have like, okay. It's kind of like we talked about with the reflector. My reflector friend calls me a lot and uses me kind of as a sounding board so that you can say it out loud. This is kind of the same thing. And these, I had a gal that I worked with that I did her chart and she was like, oh yeah, I'm on the phone with everybody. Every decision is spoken out loud, right? Because it's very much, and we talked about, you said you like to do this too, but um, yours is like tribal, you know, like your decision-making is for the tribe. (laughs) So you're like making sure everybody's good. Um, this is just very much like I am not feeling like I'm not connected in the body. Maybe in the body, you're feeling other people's authority more. So it's more about like just getting it out and seeing what you say. Okay. Are these type, the type that tend to like talk out loud to themselves too? Oh, I'm yeah. I, I, I don't have a lot of experience because it's very slim, but I, like I said, I worked with somebody that had this, um, that did support this theory of, um, you know, calling people and things like that. Mm-hmm. And then my niece is only like five or six and she just never stops. She's just like dancing around, telling me everything she knows. <laughs> she oh, <loves> you. <laughs> yeah. But it'll be interesting to watch as she, as she gets older grows with this. Yeah. So I think we have, and then lunar authority was the last one. And lunar authority was the, um, the reflector is technically supposed to wait 30 days for, to feel the moon light up every single channel before you make a decision. And it's like, Who what? can wait 30 days? <laughs> exactly. You can barely be, wait one. And usually reflectors are the most impatient people. So it just cracks me up that raw. <laughs> that, that was a great thing to tell reflectors. Um, I think that if it's a big decision, let's say that you want to like move towns or you mm. want to quit a job. Mm-hmm. I might say wait 30 days because right. I've definitely seen my reflector friend change her mind. One day it's like all in on something. And the next day, because she's so many different people over the course of a month. Yeah. So it would be good to chart for 30 days and see how you feel about this decision for 30 days. But every decision, I think the sounding board works better for a reflector. Right. Wow. For like little things. But yeah, still a a little bit of time would be good. So those are the authorities. And none of this is meant to be like, oh my gosh, I'm doing me wrong. Or um, it's just like playing with it, right? okay, I'm a sacral. How can I have people in my life? How can I ask myself? Usually it's better if somebody asks you outside of you. Yes, no questions. How can I get connected to that sacral? Maybe do Mm. a chakra series or something to see if you can um, connect more. But, But how do I get back? All of these inner authorities are in the body. And a lot of times we're just not in the body at all. Right. Yeah. So it's like, that's my problem. Get in the body, right? Right. Like, do a meditation every day. Do some mindfulness, feeling your body, feeling the floor beneath your feet, feeling, getting in the body before we make decisions. And then just getting, just, just practicing, right? If you're an emotional authority, give yourself a couple of days, see how you feel. Come to a calm before you make a decision. Only get 80% there. Sacral, yes, no in the moment. Spleen. Listen, get out of everybody's you know, way and listen to that little voice. Um, 
So yeah, those are those are the authorities in a nutshell. We're totally going over. So we're just going to go really, really quick through profiles, which is the third of the big three. Um, so profiles, it's just going to be, it'll say profile. It's going to be a, a one letter or one number and then another number, right? The first one is personality, which is more uh, of a scene. And uh, the next one is subconscious, which is maybe other people see it in you or Maybe you find yourself doing things like that, but you're not conscious of it as much. Mm. Uh, the profile, they talk about it being kind of the costume, the archetype that we came here to be, right? So we've got the type is more of the aura. How does how does your aura feel? Um, getting you to your strategy. The authority is like, how do I make decisions? And then the profile is like, how do I show up, right? <laughs> like, what do, what do people see me show up as what I, this archetype, right? And so we'll just go, you're going to have two. So it's going to be a combination. Um, but yeah, it's just one through six. So one is really the investigator, right? It's like, I always think of my mom. She's a very, she's a five one. She's a very investigator. Like, let me get all the information. My husband as well. He's a, a one three. So it's like, I just need all the information. If he's going to buy something, I'm like more of a feeler. Like, mm, me too. I think I'll buy that, right? He's like, let me research every single one of these and get all of the information. And then once I have a good steady foundation to build on, I'll buy that or I'll do that or I'll make that decision. But it's very much a foundation. It's like, I need all of the information. I need to understand this. I need a foundation to stand on, right? Like the researcher. Yeah. Like you yeah. Get research it. Yeah. Um, then the two line is kind of the dancer. Dancer hermit is what they, they kind of call it. So it's like um, they came with a little bit of natural ability. So it's more of a feeler. Oh, I th I think I'm naturally pretty like I could throw some things in a pot and make a food or whatever. Like I, I can kind of dance with life a little bit. Right. That two line. But it's like I kind of want to play with all these natural gifts and these things. I want to play with them. So that's where the hermit comes in. I kind of kind of want to go do my own thing a little bit and have some fun. And I need people to kind of call me out to go do it. Mm. And usually so gifted in areas that you're like, anybody could do that. It's not a big deal. And right. You don't even realize. <laughs> yeah. Because so you, you think people, everyone can do it. Yeah. You but, need people to be like, geez. no, you're really good at that. Right. And when people mm. do tell you you're really good at that, you need to listen because right. that's your cue that you need to come out and stop fiddling with the thing you're good at or whatever, or, you know, kind of going in your own little cave a little bit. You need to come out and share it a little bit. Mm. So that's kind of the two. Three is this natural uh, experimenter. You know, if you look at a meme or something, it's like, don't touch that line, their foot over the line, right? <laughs> like, it's like, they need to experiment with life. They need to trial and error their way through life, right? Like, mm. you can't tell them that it's not going to work for them because they're like, well, I haven't tried it yet. Mm. I have to yes. try it. I have to try it and see if it works. I have to be the trial and error. I have That's to be the son. scientist, right? Mm -hmm. And yeah, what he's a one three. So it's definitely like, I need all the information and then I got to try it. Right. 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 Yep. So, so yeah, that's the three line. Sometimes it, it gets the, the flack of like having to fail things a lot. Right. Mm -hmm. But it's like, that's mm -hmm. because you have to try it no matter what. You're not always taking like whether this is going to work or not. It's like, I got to try it anyways. Well, it's so tough for him because more. for, for Cameron, he is a projector, which you were talking about projectors wanting to be successful. So he might try something if he fails at it then he also feels like i mean if he didn't go the way he wanted it he feels like he's failing so yeah. it's like even though he's got this profile it's telling him you need to research and try things but then there's the part of him that's like but i don't want to fail yeah i want to so he's always fun. conflicted <laughs> yeah always conflicted yeah yeah it's it's very tough especially for yeah a projector with this cuz it's like oh i don't want to fail but i have to try it but you know, I want to be successful. So yeah, yeah, and definitely just understanding that and you as a mother understanding that and being able to say, hey, if you're not failing, you're not trying or something right, nice. Right. You know, uh, sometimes <laughs> I just want to put quotes to what 
they actually mean in the profile right <laughs> because it's right like, they work for some of you but not for all of you true yeah but yeah so you can use some of some of those beautiful quotes for him um and then the fourth line would be it's kind of like the networker it's very funny because uh like you're a four two you do have a lot of tribal you have a lot of warm energy so it is mm-hmm. probably easy for you to connect but somebody mm-hmm. that didn't have all that a four line they're like I don't really like people that much. Right. And not necessarily they do four lines, like people or not like people. That's not what I'm saying. It's just, they're a natural networker. You don't have Mm -hmm. to, you don't have to be an extrovert to be a four line. You don't have to be an introvert to be a four line. They're just a natural um, networker. They're naturally pulling in people that they can give information to, or their people can bring information to them. It's like naturally knowing they call it raw calls it the opportunist, you know, which doesn't sound great, but it's really like knowing like, Ooh, I have this person and they're really good for this. And I have this person and they're really good for this. Oh, you should try this person because they're really good for this. I, you know, I have you and another friend. They're always bringing me good things because you're four Mm -hmm. lines and you're always finding good people, right? Like your network naturally brings it in. If you're really strong for, you probably won't go on a blind date. (laughs) You know, it's like, bring it in through my network. Have somebody tell me that you, (laughs) you know, this person's okay. Or let me be friends with them for a while before I decide to date them. Yeah. It's, It's like this very strong, like, like I need, I need to feel safe in my network, but I'm also always looking for the right people to add to it. Right. And if Mm -hmm. you're in a fours network, it means that you probably bring something positive to the table, Mm. which is, I think is a good thing. I have lots of four friends. I'm like, I must be pretty useful. (laughs) Right. Right. You definitely are. (laughs) Definitely. So there's, there's the four line. Uh, five line. Oh my gosh. I love my five lines, but they're the ones I can tell a hundred percent of the time who they are. Right. The five yeah. line is the fixer. They have their superhero cape on at all times. They, they, you know, if they're five, one, they're grabbing all the information and they're going to give it to you to save you. Or if they're a, um, what would it be? a three, five, you know, they've tried it and now they're giving it to you because they can help you. Right. Mm. But it's like this energy of, I mean, they make really good coaches. They make really good, like cheerleaders. They're going to help you get there, but they almost sacrifice themselves because they're like, I have all this energy to take care of you. Right. Right. Sometimes they don't always have the energy to take care of you, but they just want to, they want to make it okay. They want to bring you, you cannot tell a five line they had that you have a problem without them wanting to fix it. Wow. Yeah. So if you're five line, you are freaking amazing. Just make sure that you're not trying to fix things for people that if you make sure you check in with you first, right? Right. Do you have the right. energy to fix. Did they ask you if you're a projector, right? Did they ask you to fix it? Um, do, are you responding? You're a generator, right? Are you responding to a situation that somebody brought to you? And, and then just know when enough is enough, right? You can't always continuously fix the same things over and over again. So, but yeah, five lines are amazing. They make really amazing coaches. Six line, six line is a little bit of all of the lines, but it's mostly a, three line for the first 30 years, they have a, a, a timeline kind of, right? It's like the first 30 years, like I got to get in there and try everything and experiment. And I have to fail a lot, right? I have to fail and fail and fail. And then all of a sudden your Saturn return comes and you turn 30 and you're like, what the heck? Who was that person that jumped in this and jumped in this and tried this and was trying to figure out life? And now all of a sudden I'm not ready to jump anymore as much, right? And so then you come to this kind of what they call as an up on the roof phase. And you're a little bit more apt to observe a little bit more. And you're taking all of the experience that you've learned and you're figuring out how do I share this? How do I share Mm. this experiment? Because as a six line at 50 is when you really are like that fine wine that comes out as a role model. 
right? Mm. But you wouldn't have anything to role model if you didn't get in there and try some things. So it was like boots on the ground for the first 30 years. Take a little bit of a step back and look around a little bit and then figure out what's worth sharing, right? Mm. And it's a really interesting one because you see a lot of people that maybe aren't as self-aware and they maybe have a six line and they might be a little just beaten down, right? <laughs> like yeah. I experimented and then I don't understand why I'm a completely different person now and I don't, I'm not on this path to share, right? Right. So that's not the healthiest thing for a six line, figuring out like, what? Yeah, like maybe they didn't realize what their lessons were. And so, yeah, like you said, they feel beaten down and they feel like I don't have anything to share because yeah. I kind of screwed yeah. up or whatever yeah. they're feeling. Yeah, but it's never too late. Your six line, I don't care where you're at, figure out what your, and and, and it's usually all of these profiles are really here to de- demonstrate your cross which we have um, here, the incarnation cross. So being a role model, mine is the cross of education on the six line. So mm. I'm really here to share these systems, right? Share this information. That's what I'm here to role model. But I had to go through life, you know, a little bit one-sided sometimes. Let me try this. This is going to work. Let me try this. This is going to work. Let me try this. Well, now, Ooh, I'm going to look at all these systems and see how do I educate how, what's right for the individual. So like my daughter is a six, two. Is it a huge difference to be a six, two versus a two, six? It's definitely going to have a different energy, right? So the six line, she's going to be mostly personality three right now, experimenting, right? Trying things out, mm-hmm. trial and erroring. Um, and then that hermit side, that two side is a little bit more, you might notice that she'll hermit sometimes, but she probably mm-hmm. wouldn't call herself a hermit, right? Okay. Yeah. If your two is the first one, sometimes it's more apt that you're going to, what are you two, four? Yes. Two, four is an interesting one because you're such a networker. You still got to have people, but you are kind of a hermit up front. You know, it's a Mm -hmm. very interesting dynamic. My son is a two, four and yeah, he's, I feel like like it's conflicting. Yeah. Yeah. He seems like he's the most like outgoing. He gets invited to every single birthday party. Like everybody Mm -hmm. thinks he's part of their network, you know? Yeah. Yeah. But then again, he's kind of reserved and shy too. It's yeah. It's just interesting. I, yes, I feel that. Yeah. But the, the, if the two line, like mine's kind of hidden, right. I lead with like, Oh, look at, you know, let me share. Right. But I'm definitely like, okay, let me, <laughs> let me hide yeah. sometimes. Right. Like the two's a little right. bit hidden. Um, so yeah, usually y- you just might notice the, the personality side, the first line shows up a little bit more, but you'll notice. Wait, so what's your things. profile? I'm a six, two. Oh, you're the same as Ava. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, Hmm. and these, and these also, I don't want to get on a tangent at all, but they, they're bridges, right? So when we really get along well with somebody, it usually is because we're kind of bridged, right? Whether we have, um, and now I'm probably going to forget which ones go with which, um, I, I believe it's the one for the three, five in the, uh, six. I'm going to forget which ones now, but they, they bridge, right? So, oh, it's a four, two. So the four and the two get along really well, right? So you're already, that's probably why the two, four is such a good natural networker. Um, and like, maybe, you know, you have somebody that you have nothing in common with. You don't have that harmonic in the profile. Mm -hmm. You can just feel that it's off. The resonancy is off, right? So mm. now I wish I knew the harmonics. I'll have to do something on those. I, I did a lot of research in the beginning about those, and then I haven't even picked it up forever. But that's going deep in, though. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's one and three, two and four, and then it would leave six. And what would that leave six? No. Yeah, I can't remember. That's okay. Oh, I think it's probably three and six and then one and five. I'll have to look. But 
Hmm. Now we can stop rabbit holing. <laughs> okay, <laughs> how do we feel about the the profiles? Good. I feel like I could understand them better. The the thing that really messed me up was the authorities. Yeah. Um, and, and that's because you're an emotional authority, and it's the most unclear, right? Yes, I guess that's what it is. Yeah. 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 So everybody go out, figure out your big three, figure out your family and friends, big threes. Um, there, there's just, there's so much gold just from knowing this, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, like if, if I love all of the things in astrology, all of the deeper things, I love learning about your cross. Like, what did I come here for? What's my purpose? How do I, you know, like the circuitry, am I here for the collective? Am I here for the tribe? How do I best use it? I love getting into all of that, but it's like, if you just had the big three in human design, that's what Ra taught. Like, just do your design, right? Just know you're a generator. You're here to respond. You're sacral. Yes, no. And you, that's all you need, right? That's all you need. Huh. Just go live yeah. your life, right? Right. Go live your life in alignment and see where it takes you. That's all you need. But, I mean, we're human and it's fun. Anyone, yes. <laughs> I mean, if you're a researcher, you want to keep digging. Yes, Going yes. Going deeper. And for me, it's, it's just playing with these planetary and it's like, what, what could we, what could I teach somebody? What could change their life with this information? Where do, you know, right. that's what I get excited about. Yeah. See that incarnation cross thing. I would, I don't know what any of that means, but that is, sounds interesting to me. Like, well, you know, like the sleeping Phoenix, right? Like the sleeping Phoenix, the, this one we've got in front of us is like, let me be the busiest person you've ever met the 3420 let me be the busiest person you've ever met i'm i'm just always doing something i'm always talking i'm always doing something i'm always creating something i'm going and going and going and i'm not even sure where i'm going and then all of a sudden i realize that i'm not in the right path and i burn the whole thing to the ground like a <laughs> phoenix rising from the ashes and i start again oh, wow that's kind of sounds exhausting that not for the sleeping phoenix they're the busiest person you've ever met wow. <laughs> they love to be every phoenix i know i love watching them i'm like wow you are the busiest person i've ever met you are going and you're not even sure where you're going until you know it's <laughs> not right and you're like i'm gonna burn this down i'm done <clears throat> you know uh, yeah. my sister's a sleeping phoenix i remember she worked she worked and worked and worked and worked and she loved th this job at wells fargo and then it was like i'm done she quit She's never gone back to her corporate job again. Done. That was terrible. Uh, oh I know another sleeping Phoenix right now started this beautiful business and he's done with it. He's ready to burn it to the ground. He's done with it. Done. I'm going to start another one. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Yeah. It's just, everybody can do their design. Like you're the right cross of planning. Like you got all this tribal circuitry. You are here to plan get this community going for your people that, you know, share, you're this teacher, you're here to share, but you're the one who's going to get the plan so that everybody can get to the school, right? Like you built the school, right? Like you're the planner, you're good <laughs> at it. Like that's what you do. You're now you're doing this tribe, this building of the wellness tribe. You're, mm -hmm. you're tribal, you're a planner, you're getting things done so we can all join you. Right. Interesting. And you're the Crazy. two four, so you got to network. You got to, you know, like know your people and know this person and know this person and know this person. Then you got to play with your gifts a little bit. And then you got to have somebody call you out and say, hey, you do, you do Reiki, right? <laughs> <laughs> right? You're Talk really about good it. at it. <laughs> uh, yeah. My downfall is the marketing piece. <laughs> well, you don't have it to the throat, right? You, you just need to plan yourself a planner to do that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it'll, it, it all will work out, but yeah, it, it, you could just live your design and it all work out, but you're a planner. So that's kind of the opposite of the sleeping Phoenix. <laughs> it's like, let's, let's plan this out. Let's make our next move. Yeah. yeah. Interesting. Well, thank you so much for going over all of these with me. Yes. Yes. Hopefully everybody now understands that a little bit more, um, 
But yeah, this was just really fun to share. And I had you to question me to make sure that I'm giving an up death. So we know <laughs> <laughs> we're going for deep. sure. Um, yeah, just tell for everybody sure. a little bit about what you offer so that they can find more about you. Yeah. Um, so I've had my website now like three and a half years. It is wellnessmatterstribe.com. You can go on there. I have basically I'm a content creator. I create lots of different um information for somebody to really come into themselves and you know empower themselves. I do blogs, I do podcasts all on things that have to do with the mind, the body, and the spirit. And so, yeah, I also do Reiki healing on there. So you can go on there and I am doing a um, membership program so people can come and, you know, we can meet once a month and go over things in a little bit more, you know, of a granule process or get different, um, you know, people to come in and do teachings as well, like do um, workshops and that kind of thing. So yeah, it's a lot of things. I have a couple of books that I've written that I have on there as well. So you have a podcast, you're a preschool teacher by day, you know, yeah, all the things. Yeah. Well, as I am learning today, the, actually we talked about it before we started the podcast, but the goddess archetype that I am is kind of like the teacher, the nurturer. I love working with the children and explaining things in a way that isn't so overwhelming. So yeah, yeah that's me in a nutshell. Yeah. <laughs> but thank you so much for having me on. Thank you for joining me and, and being that voice of like, Hey, slow down. Let's slow down. Get, let's get yeah. in this. Um, so it was perfect. I always enjoy talking to you and Thank you so much for coming. Yes, thanks for having me. Thanks.